Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. My name is Melissa O'Connell. I'm your Lexus Technology Specialist. And today we are going to take a deep dive look at the updated 2023 Lexus ES because most of the changes for this model year pertain to the multimedia system and the buttons that operate it, I will use some footage from last year's deep dive tutorial wherever appropriate, just so you have a heads up about that. If you're new to the Lexus Virtual Classroom, make sure to check out the time-stamped index that's in the description below the video. You'll either see Show More if you're on a desktop, just click to open the timestamp index. And if you're watching on mobile, look for the word more somewhere below the video title. That will open the video description and you can scroll through the images of the chapters. Click view all if you'd like to see the chapters in list view. You can also see the full timestamped index in the mobile format by clicking on more from above so that you can learn in any way that works best for you. The most exciting change to the ES this year is the introduction of the new Lexus interface system. The new touchscreen display has been moved 5.6 inches closer, so it's within easy reach of the driver. There's a standard 8-inch display and an optional 12.3-inch display. The new multimedia system includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the new Drive Connect bundle that includes cloud-based navigation with Google Points of Interest, the Intelligent Voice Assistant, and the Destination Assist Live Operator. Keep in mind that Drive Connect does require a subscription. The optional 12.3-inch display package comes with a complimentary trial period. But on the standard display setup, you can always subscribe if you would like to activate that feature. You can also now get the Smart Access Key Card that a lot of people refer to as the Wallet Key. It's available on all ES models. Models. Other changes include a new buzzer sound that's been incorporated into the kick sensor to let you know that the sensor has seen your foot. The panoramic view monitor has been upgraded with the new underfloor or see-through view feature. Since the new Lexus interface system is voice first and touchscreen operated, they were able to remove the touchpad from the previous year models and completely update the lower center console. There's a new cup holder layout, the USB ports have changed. There's also a new layout for the optional wireless charger. There is no CD player any longer. You'll notice on the hybrid models that the blue highlight has been removed from the L badge. This is happening pretty much across the line for all the Lexus hybrid models now and they've eliminated the hybrid badging, so the word hybrid spelled out, from the rear door rocker panels. There are some new packages for the ES. There's a new F-Sport design model. There's also an F-Sport handling model. That's available on the Allgas ES350 and the hybrid ES300H. When you get a new Lexus with the Lexus interface system, one of the most important things to do right away is set up your driver profile and add the vehicle to your Lexus app garage. Let's take a look at how to do that and then we'll explore all of the other features on the vehicle. When you hop in your new Lexus interface vehicle, you'll make a selection for your language of preference and then enter your phone number and press send you'll receive a text message inviting you to download the Lexus app. If you've already downloaded the Lexus app, you can ignore that text message, but go ahead and open and sign in to your Lexus account. If you don't have an account, make sure to follow the steps to register. To remove an existing vehicle, select the vehicle name on the top left corner, scroll to the bottom, and choose Remove Vehicle. If you're keeping that vehicle and you'd like to add a new one, touch and hold on your Lexus app garage and click the plus symbol 
on the top right hand corner. For Lexus Interface Vehicles, you'll click Scan QR Code right at the bottom. If you need to give permission for your app to access your camera, go ahead and confirm and sign back in when you're prompted for security. And then scan the QR code. Once the vehicle is linked to your Lexus account, the system will ask you if you've completed app setup. Go ahead and finish the app setup on your phone. Click Save Changes at the bottom of the screen. And then go through the steps to set up your connected services trials for Remote Connect, Safety Connect, Drive Connect Navigation if your vehicle comes with a Drive Connect trial. Select Continue. You'll notice that the vehicle is already even ready for Bluetooth setup. We'll do that next. We'll accept the terms for all of our connected services, but if you're not sure that you want to set up a Wi-Fi hotspot on the vehicle, just choose Maybe Later, and then Confirm, Confirm, and Continue. Congratulations! Finish Setup right at the bottom of the screen. Once we have our app home screen, make sure to check which vehicle is your default vehicle. Is it the previous vehicle you had? Push and hold to open your garage, and then you'll see two dots letting you know there are two vehicles in this garage. So we can just slide left or right, choose the vehicle that you'd like to be your default, make default, and then click the check mark at the bottom of the screen. Now you'll see all of the features that are available for this vehicle. Let's keep going. Now we're going to set up Bluetooth. We'll select yes for setting up Bluetooth, and then on your smartphone, open settings, Bluetooth, and look for Lexus ES to appear on screen. Select pair and OK on the screen and allow. You just are going to click affirmative, lots of pop-ups on the screen and the phone. Yes, this is my primary device. Yes, I would like to use Apple CarPlay. And yes again on the phone screen for permission for Apple CarPlay. We just need all of those permissions to be authorized for our device to be connected for Bluetooth and wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that you're linking to your driver profile. To get back to our Lexus interface system, just click Lexus and you'll see the Lexus interface menu on the left hand side. If you would like to add an additional driver profile, you would click on the plus a person icon and then you'll be asked for their Lexus account login information. That means they need their own Lexus account and you'll be able to add them to the vehicle as a driver. They won't go through the scan QR code process because the vehicle will not be in their app garage, but they will be able to customize settings on the ES like radio favorites, for example. To delete a driver profile, Confirm that the primary driver is connected, select edit, and then click on the minus symbol and click delete. It's going to delete the driver profile and the Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. And then in your phone's device, come to settings, Bluetooth, and then go ahead and Forget this device. You can also drive the vehicle in guest mode. That means you won't have a driver profile connected, but you can still connect your phone for Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Just click search for devices on the vehicle, open the Bluetooth settings on your phone, and follow the steps to pair your device. You'll select on the vehicle screen and the phone screen to give all permissions. When prompted to download the Lexus app, you can enter your phone number 
and you'll receive a text inviting you to download the Lexus app. Select to allow Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and just follow all the prompts on screen to make sure your device is completely connected. You still have your Lexus interface system, but without a primary driver profile and your subscriptions activated, you won't have Lexus Drive Connect, but you can always choose to subscribe at any point because all screen sizes are compatible with Drive Connect. They just require either an active trial or a paid subscription. Now that we have our driver profile set up, let's explore the rest of the vehicle. We'll come back to all of the other Lexus interface features when we explore the new center console. It's always a good idea to be aware of the location of the parking sensors. You'll see them on the front bumper and grill, parking sensor location on the rear bumper. So those are going to beep at you when you get too close to something. Generally, they activate it about three feet away and you'll have an indication on your dash as well as the beep. You want to make sure that you always have your smart access key with you. That is how you lock, unlock, and start the vehicle from inside. You can also open the trunk with just a push and hold, and you have a vehicle alert button or an alarm. If you're still using this panic button to locate your vehicle in a parking lot, go ahead and change to the Lexus app. Using the Find feature that's part of the Remote Connect services in the Lexus app, you can locate your ES in its last parking place. Once your remote is activated, you'll see the Lock, Start, and Unlock icons on screen. To remote start the vehicle, just touch and hold for a second on the Start button. It's going to send that request to the vehicle. We'll see our lights flash. And the engine has started. And then we'll receive a notification of the success from our command and letting us know that the vehicle will run for 10 minutes. When you attempt to enter the vehicle and the engine is running for safety reasons, it will turn off by default just hop in and start the vehicle like normal. When you have your Lexus account set up and your Remote Connect feature is turned on, you can remote start your ES either through the Lexus app or with your key fob. If you're using the key fob, you do need to be within about 30 feet of the vehicle with a clear line of sight. Using the lock button on the key fob, you're going to press, Press, press and hold. You'll see the indicator lights flash if you're in proximity to the vehicle. The self-leveling headlights will do their self-leveling check. Because we are demonstrating on a hybrid model, we don't hear the gasoline engine turn on. But if you peek through the window, you will see that this ES hybrid has indeed remotely started. So let's go ahead and practice using smart access to lock and unlock your Lexus. Make sure that your key is in your pocket or your bag. Any door handle that has an indentation means it is equipped with smart access. So if you put your hand in the door handle and just make contact, those side mirrors will open automatically if the auto feature is on your vehicle and engaged. So my hand in the door handle, driver's side door, is just unlocking my driver's door. If I want to then open the rest of the vehicle, I would need to hit the unlock button inside or because we have smart access on all four doors on an ES, I'm able to just touch the inside door handle of the back doors 
and I've opened the entire ES. Another option for unlocking the entire ES from the driver's door handle is to just leave your hand in the door handle for a few more seconds. Check this out. Driver's door. And that additional beep has let me know that the entire ES is now open. That's also customizable. So if you wanted to program your driver's door to unlock the entire vehicle, you can do that in settings in the system in the car. If you have a power trunk feature, you're going to see the push and fold button. If it's not power, it's going to just pop open and then you can lift it manually. But on this vehicle, if we push and hold, you'll hear a beep. It's going to power open. There is also a rectangular rubber touch pad located on the right hand side of the trunk lid. As long as you have your key with you, you can just press it to pop open the trunk. Now the kick sensor on the ES has an additional tone, letting you know when to remove your foot. But just remember, you don't have to leave your foot under the bumper. You're just going to kick and retrieve your foot. You'll hear that new tone now, letting you know that the sensor has seen your foot. Make sure you have your smart key with you. You'll aim your kick right in the center of the rear bumper. We just kick and come back. You don't have to hold your foot or swing side to side. If you hold your foot in place under the bumper, you'll hear the first beep, which is the beep telling you, okay, go ahead and move your foot out of the way. But then you'll hear two beeps letting you know that it's canceled. It thinks that you're too close for the trunk to operate. So either kick, wait for the beep and move your foot, or just kick, and step back. You can kick to open and kick to close. Keep in mind that when you close your trunk, even when you power close with the kick sensor, you're not locking your vehicle. So make sure to lock either with the button on the key fob or from the smart access system on any of the four door handles. If you're opening your trunk with your smart access key, the button from the interior of the vehicle, or even the kick sensor. You always have the capability of closing a power trunk with the power trunk close button on the left-hand side of the trunk lid. Just push and release and it will close for you. You can close your trunk manually with the handle that's located just on the right-hand side. Taking a look inside the trunk, Make sure that you are aware of your front mount for your license plate on the front of the vehicle. This is required in many states, so do not discard. Your new Lexus vehicle should also come with a first aid kit that's Velcroed to the interior of the trunk. You'll have a cargo net stored neatly in a zip pouch. Let's take a look at how the zip pouch cargo net works just unzip to reveal the netting. You have hooks on either side of your trunk. Put those tabs in place and you have a nice net with a solid base to keep everything neat and tidy. If you would like to connect the two center cords, this piece actually pops off and it has two connector points you can simply hook that onto the back cord and then take the front cord and snap that into place. Now it will keep everything even better contained. If you need to access the tools or the spare tire area, you want to always put away your cargo net and completely store and remove the pouch. Because the clasps are plastic, you want to unhook from the D-ring and let's remove that pouch. Now we have access to the cargo area. You're going to remove the carpet mat or simply fold it back. 
you'll see it says lift and hook. That lets you know that with this hook, you can clip into place right at the top, and then it keeps your hands free to be able to access the tools and the spare tire. When you're putting things back, make sure that you snap and snug right into place so everything stays quiet while you're on the road. So in this area, we have all of the tools for changing a tire, including a wheel lock key. So if your vehicle comes equipped with wheel locks, your wheel lock key will snap right into this storage spot. You wanna make sure to hold on to that. To identify a wheel lock, look for the lug nut that has the wave pattern. That is your locking lug nut. Your wheel lock key matches to that lug nut. When you're finished, just lift up to release. Slide that back into its spot. Snap that clasp to close. And I like to always make sure that this felted panel is pushed neatly down into place. And then replace your cargo mat, and then you can replace your cargo net. When you're putting your cargo net back into place, make sure that the hook side is closest to the D-ring, and then you'll have better access to your netting. The ES and ES Hybrid use regular fuel. There is a button in the interior to open the fuel door. This is one of our vehicles that is not a push to release for the fuel door. So let's take a look at the buttons inside. Your fuel door release button and trunk release button are just inside the driver's door. Right below is the manual release for the hood. Now let's adjust the seat for your best driving position. You can move forward, back, you can lift the hip point up or down, and the front of the cushion supporting the front of your legs can also go up or down. You can tilt the seat back, forward, or back. You can even control lumbar support. Depending on the package on your ES, you may have an additional button to extend the seat cushion forward or for front leg support. Once you have your seat positioned in the best spot for you, then use the toggle on the left-hand side of the steering column. It's a tilting and telescoping steering wheel. You can bring it toward you, away, down, or up. Make the adjustments to your side view mirrors. Toggle L for left, R for right, and use the touchpad to select your preferred view while driving. Once you've made the adjustments to your seat, steering wheel, and side mirrors, go ahead and press set, let it go, and your selected driver position memory number. When you hear the beep, you know it's been saved. To recall your driving position, if you've adjusted your seat or someone else has driven your vehicle, just press your driver position memory button. You'll hear a beep and everything will adjust based on the settings that you saved previously. Now, go ahead and link your key. Linking the key for the ES is still done through the buttons in the driver's door handle. Make sure to have your selected key with you. All doors need to be closed, and then using two hands, you'll simultaneously press the button for your driver position memory and the unlock button. We're listening for a short and then long beep. All set. Then to take advantage of the linked key, make sure that your vehicle is locked. And then when you want to access your vehicle, unlock from the driver's door. Remember, this is using the smart access system and it's part of the unlocking process at the driver's door. If there's enough adjustment in the seat position from your saved memory position, 
you'll see the seat begin to prepare, but it will still leave you more room to easily enter the vehicle. Notice what happens when I push button number one, then it will continue moving the seat to my saved position. You don't have to even worry about pushing your button. Just click in your seat belt and the seat will complete the adjustment for you. Another item to note about the side mirrors, if you have this selector bar toggled either left or right, when you put the vehicle in reverse, the mirrors will tilt down. That's also customizable. Go ahead and put the vehicle in reverse. Make the adjustment that you want for the right and left mirror in the tilted down position, and then put the vehicle back into park and that setting will be memorized. If you prefer the mirrors not to tilt down in reverse, just toggle the selector bar to the neutral position. So not tilted down on either side. If you see the word auto up at the top, that lets you know that you have auto folding mirrors. You can choose to power fold them in by pushing down and to the right, or you can open them to the auto position or tilt all the way to the left and they will hold in the open position. Most people do prefer leaving them in auto. It means that when you lock the vehicle, the mirrors will fold in automatically. And that's kind of just a great indication that your vehicle is locked. If your ES has a panel of buttons on the left-hand side, you may have buttons with features and some that are blank. If you have a blank button, it just means that there may be a feature available in another area that's not on the package on your vehicle. No worries. If your vehicle is not equipped with those features, instead of a bank of blank buttons, you'll have another detailed trim piece. If you have a heads up display, you'll see the button to turn it on and off here. It's going to be visible only to the driver. We'll take a look at head-up display customizations later in the video. The 360 degree monitor. Just push to activate. Even though it looks like there's a camera above the car, the cameras are located at the front, rear, and under each side mirror. With the vehicle in park, Press the view monitor button and you have either a see-through view or a bird's eye view using the menu bar on the left-hand side. Just click to change perspective. You can pause and play. You can close out of the view monitor by clicking the X at the top of the menu. Press the view monitor button. Select the gear on the bottom left corner to make additional customizations. You can turn on or off the cornering view, the view under the vehicle, which looks like a see-through view. This is a really cool feature. It's using the images that are captured as you drive either forward or in reverse, and it stitches them together to make it look like you can see through the bottom of the vehicle. You can also select to customize the body color of the vehicle shown on screen. The cameras show a different view when the vehicle is in drive. Let's check it out. Apply the brake, shift into drive, and then press the view monitor button. You still have a menu bar on the left-hand side, but now you have some additional features. You can still close out by clicking the X on the top of the menu bar. You can also change the perspective that shows on the large portion of the screen on the right hand side. You can turn off or on the dynamic yellow intended path lines or the turn angle lines that show on the left hand side. 
these are like the dynamic lines that you're used to seeing on the backup camera view, but now you have them showing your intended path as you move forward. When the lines are no longer there, it means the wheels are straight. You can select to have this feature turn on automatically at low speeds. This is very helpful in parking. It can take a little getting used to when you're using it in high traffic areas. But if you're coming up behind a vehicle that may have a tow hitch on it, it's awfully great to have a better perspective about where you are in relationship to the vehicle in front of you. Now let's see what it looks like on a drive. See-through view with our dynamic lines on the left-hand side, showing our intended path. As we pick up speed, we're back to our map. We'll come to a stop. And because we have auto mode activated, it came on automatically. Very helpful. If auto mode is turned off, you'll see a slash mark through the auto mode icon. If you shift into reverse, you'll see the backup camera view. We have a backup camera view settings menu on the left-hand side. Just click on an item to adjust that setting. This view shows a more straight behind you view. You can go to a more fisheye or wide angle view if you need more visuals. There are a variety of different screens showing backup camera lines. The yellow lines are dynamic and they show your intended path as you're turning. The blue lines are the straight on view. The blue dash shows the center of the vehicle. When your dynamic lines line up with the straight blue lines, you know your wheels are straight. The red line shows that you're getting pretty close to that back bumper. Let's click through our different backup camera line options. If you're seeing this view, then the dynamic yellow lines have been turned off. This shows your turn angle view, meaning if you were to turn the wheel all the way to the right, or all the way to the left, that would be your intended path. Selecting again, and you can turn off all of the lines except for that closest marker, that red line, letting you know that you're probably about six inches or so from the back bumper. Click again, and this is a view that not many people are aware that they have. It has the yellow dynamic intended path lines, but it also gives you a dynamic center line of the vehicle. As you turn, it turns with you. But notice that the blue straight on lines have been eliminated for this view. So just click through until you have it where you want it. If we click on the settings gear, we return back to our panoramic view monitor settings. Just click to go back. For vehicles with a 12.3 inch display that don't have the 360 monitor, this is your backup camera view. And notice that your menu of settings is actually across the bottom but you have all of the same settings available of the backup camera view screen. Moving down, you have a coin holder or small storage space. Now let's move up. Tucked behind the headlamp stock, we have the adjustment for the brightness of our instrument cluster. The icon in the middle tells you what you're adjusting. It's a picture of a light by a gauge, but you're going to use the arrow buttons on either side to make the adjustment. So the up arrow will increase the brightness, the down arrow will make it more dim. To the right, we have our odometer and trip meter button. So if you can take a look in this area, while I push the button, it will cycle us through trip A, trip B, 
When you see the wrench, that's letting you know how many miles before your next oil change. Keep in mind, you're going to service every 5,000 miles, but every 10,000 miles is when they typically do an oil change unless the vehicle were to need it sooner. So if you don't reach 5,000 miles within six months, you still want to come in for service. So the rule now is Every 5,000 miles or every six months, you should bring your vehicle into the Lexus dealership for service. Let's keep scrolling through that odometer trip meter button. Your next screen is blank. So if you ever get into your vehicle and you don't see your mileage, don't panic. It doesn't mean it's gone away. It just means it's been turned off because that's an option. Push again and you'll be back on odometer showing the overall miles for the vehicle. Trip A and trip B can be cleared if you're tracking mileage for work, for example, or if you're tracking mileage on a trip. Just push and hold, it will zero out. You can only do that on trip A and trip B. Your headlamp stock is located on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. On the end, you'll see a button to push for your automatic high beams. If you push the headlamp stock forward, you'll manually engage your high beams. For everything to remain in auto, make sure low beams are selected to auto and high beams are selected to auto. And then just keep the stock in the neutral position. If you have a circumstance where you would like to turn all of your lights off, just turn the dial to the bottom where it says DRL off. That means daytime running lights off. We have a parking light or daytime running lights only. And then the manual control for your low beam headlights. This vehicle has a lane change indicator feature where if you just do a soft press, either down or up, you get a certain number of clicks or flashes of your indicator and that can be customized. If you're turning, you want to click fully down or fully up and then the stock will release as you come through the turn. The windshield wiper stock is on the right hand side of the steering wheel. The first set of information lets you know what function you're in. If you push up, you're going to get one swipe for mist and then it will automatically come down to the off position. If your system says auto, then you have rain sensing automatic windshield wipers if you have turned them on. If it says INT for intermittent, then you're in charge of your windshield wipers. But for auto, we come down one click from the off position, and then we can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers. Or what we're really doing is telling the car how little or how much water to respond to. So if it's not raining very hard, you might need to make sure that they're in the most sensitive position and then it won't take quite so much water to get those windshield wipers to engage. If you want to manually control the wipers, just click down again for low and then at the very bottom position is high. low, back to auto. To clean the front windshield, you would just pull the stock to you. Let's go through the buttons on the steering wheel. Starting on the left-hand side, you're going to see up, down, left, and right arrows, and the ES has a button in the middle that says OK. Some vehicles just have a dot. They all function in the same way. This is a go back button. These buttons control your multi-information screen. You can move left or right, and in certain screens, you can move up or down. 
So now that you know that this is what I'm using to operate that screen, I'm going to zoom you into that screen and talk you through the features that are available. Anytime we need to select something, we're going to be pushing the OK button right in the middle. If we need to go back, we're going to use our Go Back button. Non export models have a large round center bezel with gauges on the right and the multi information display on the left hand side. A few quick items to note for the multi information display on the F Sport models you'll see a notched center bezel that is inspired by the LFA. When the center bezel is closed, you'll have gauges on the top outside sections. You'll also have certain multi-information display content in the center below the digital speedometer. If you arrow down with the buttons on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you'll scroll through the items in the multi-information display. If you push the menu button, the go back button, your bezel will slide open and then the multi-information display functions in the same way as the non-F-Sport model. Moving right or left and up or down to access all of the information in your display. F-Sport models also have a G-Force monitor in the information menu and even a gear position monitor and push the menu or return arrow button to close. Now let's take a look at that multi-information screen. Taking a look across the top of the menu, you'll see I for the information menu, arrowing to the right, and we have a compass or navigation screen. To the right again for our audio system, Notice that it says press OK for source. If we push the OK button, we'll open the source menu. Then you can arrow down to make a source selection or up, pushing the go back button to exit that screen, arrowing to the right for our driving support information. When you have radar cruise control turned on, You'll see this message that Radar Cruise is active, letting you know to pay attention to other vehicles. And then that will clear and it will say Radar Ready. When we review the buttons on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, we'll go into the screen in more detail. Arrowing to the right again for service or low fuel messages. And to the right again for our setting screen arrowing to the right one more time, and we loop back around to the beginning of our multi-information display menu. The information menu has multiple screens. You can arrow down or up to make your selection. Once you use the up or down arrows, you'll see that slide bar appear. If you don't operate the arrow buttons for a few seconds, that slide bar will vanish and hide. Don't be concerned, you still have all those screens available. The first two screens on the information menu are drive or trip information. Arrowing down, and we have probably our most popular piece of information, the range. How many miles are left on this particular tank of gas? The drive information screens are customizable on this vehicle, and I'll show you how to do that when we are in our settings menu. Let's arrow down for our eco indicator. This will light up in the eco zone when you're driving in a fuel efficient way. Arrowing down for our tire pressure information. It is very common for these to all be slightly different, especially during times where the temperature is changing in your area. Arrowing down again for a blank screen, if that's your preference. And arrow down one more time and we loop around right back to the top. Now we've already explored going to the right. So let's shortcut 
to our settings menu by clicking the left arrow button. At the top of our settings menu, you'll notice the icons on the left of the top three items. That means they all work together. That's for your lane trace assist feature. You can turn on or off lane centering. That's part of your lane trace assist feature. Lane centering is active when you're using dynamic radar cruise control. It works to keep you more centered in the lane. When you aren't using dynamic radar cruise control, you still have lane departure alert working for you, as long as you have your lane monitoring system turned on. Just press OK to turn the feature off or on. You can also choose to customize the alert for your lane departure system. You can have either a vibration of the steering wheel or an audible alert, a series of beeps. Just push the OK button to make the change. This is what the vibration sounds like. Arrowing down, you can customize the sensitivity for your lane departure or lane trace assist feature. Pressing OK to change from standard to high. Press OK again, back to standard. Arrowing down for cruise control customization. Press OK and you can customize curve speed reduction. When you have radar cruise control turned on and active, the vehicle will automatically reduce your speed as you're approaching and driving through a curve, and then it will automatically accelerate as you're coming out of the curve in order to have better control coming through that curve. You can customize this setting by pushing OK. The default is set to high. Just push the OK button to toggle through your other options. You can turn the feature off, customize the setting to low, or leave it on high. Pushing the go back button, and arrowing down to PCS for our pre-collision system. Pressing OK to open, we can customize the sensitivity for the pre-collision system. There are three levels of sensitivity. The most sensitive is going to have the three bars. The middle range of sensitivity is the standard setting, and then the least sensitive with just the one bar showing arrowing down and you can turn the pre-collision system off. You would arrow up to select yes and then press OK. Then you're going to have the pre-collision system off message gigantically displayed on your screen. Also, when you turn the vehicle off and back on, it is going to default pre-collision back to on. Pressing the go back button, arrowing down, Turning on blind spot monitor. The blind spot monitor lights up in your side mirror. If there's a vehicle in your blind spot on either side, both mirrors will light. Keep in mind that it does have to be turned on and the vehicle will need to be in your blind spot. So not right beside you where you could just turn your head to see it. So we wanna make sure that you're still using your mirrors and not just relying on all the technology that is there to supplement your mirrors. Coming down to PKSA, that stands for Parking Support Alert. Things that beep at you when you're parking. Push the OK button. You can turn on or off your parking sensors. I love leaving those on for sure. You can always temporarily mute the sound from your parking sensors by pressing the OK button on the left-hand side of your steering wheel. You'll have the message PKSA muted temporarily. It will automatically reset itself. You can also temporarily mute the parking sensors from the main screen just by clicking on the speaker button icon.
and then arrow down for RCTA, Rear Cross Traffic Alert. The system is looking for vehicles or motion crossing at the rear of your ES while you're in reverse. It's going to beep at you and flash the icon in your side mirrors. If your vehicle is equipped with rear camera detection, you'll also see this item listed here. Rear camera detection, off or on, that's allowing your backup camera to look for pedestrians crossing at the rear of the vehicle. Arrowing down, we can also customize the volume for all of the alerts that we receive through the parking support alert features. There are three levels, three, one, two, and two is the default. Pressing the go back arrow and coming down to this little icon. This icon represents parking support brake. So if we have PKSA, things that beep at you and alert you when you're parking, the parking support brake works in conjunction with those features to help apply the brake for you if you've been given an alert and maybe you're not paying attention to it. For example, one time I was backing up in a parking lot at a very busy shopping center and it was pouring down rain and the system was beeping and yelling at me. I was continuing to back up. I was going slowly, but I did not stop. My vehicle decided I better stop and it applied the brakes for me. I was a little surprised at first, but then a shopping cart went flying past the back of my vehicle and I was beyond grateful for this feature. So if it does engage for you, it can be a little surprising because it does mean business. It applies that brake, parking support brake. You can turn it off, but I recommend leaving it on. If your vehicle has a head up display, you can select to adjust the brightness or raise or lower your heads up display. When you're raising or lowering the heads up display, you'll see a bracket around the entire display for a better reference point. Pushing go back, there are additional customizations for the heads up display in another menu and we'll get there in just a bit. Arrowing down, you can change the unit of measurement from miles to kilometers depending on your area. Arrowing down to vehicle settings and press the OK button to open the menu. If you push OK to open Lane Trace Assist, you'll notice that we're actually customizing the sway warning information and the sensitivity for Lane Trace Assist sway warning. We're not turning Lane Trace Assist, the feature, on or off. The sway warning system works in conjunction with our lane departure alert and lane trace assist feature. If you are getting warnings that you are departing the lane without your blinker on and you've received multiple warnings in a row, the vehicle is actually going to start being a little worried about you that perhaps you are a fatigued driver. You can turn the sway warning off if you prefer or you can just customize the sensitivity from low, high, or standard, which is the default. And notice that little coffee cup icon on the left-hand side. The system will actually pop up a picture of a coffee cup because remember, it thinks you might be tired. I think it's suggesting you may wanna pull over, take a break and drink some coffee if that's your thing. Pushing the go back button. Coming down to BSM for blind spot monitor. We turned the feature on before, but now we can customize the feature, adjusting from dim to bright for that icon lighting up in our side mirrors and the sensitivity for how soon we will be notified about a vehicle in our blind spot. There are four levels of sensitivity, so just keep clicking the OK button until you have it where you want it. Pushing go back and coming down to this little icon. So that is a picture of a car with a camera view looking at a street sign. Guess what this is called? Road sign assist. 
push OK to open, and there it is, RSA, Road Sign Assist on or off. When you toggle it off by pushing OK, it will gray out the customizations. Push OK again to turn on, and coming down to our excess speed notification. Push OK to open. Having a visual warning when you exceed the speed limit that the system is recognizing is the default setting, but you can turn it off if you prefer. So you would just choose no notification and push OK to select. If you've made a customization, it's going to jump you back to the previous menu, just like we saw before. Now notice we chose no notification, so now the notification level setting is no longer available. It's been grayed out. If we would like to have a notification, but we just wanna customize it a little bit more, let's turn that feature back on. Pushing OK to open excess speed, and you can choose visual only, or visual and audible. Most people prefer visual only. It's just going to give a little highlight around the image of the speed limit sign, just to bring a little attention to the fact that you may wanna slow down a bit. Your notification level by default will be one mile an hour over. You can change that to three or five miles per hour over the speed limit whichever you prefer. Speed limit signs and additional driving support information will appear in your head-up display depending on your settings. As you're approaching new speed limit signs, if the system is not able to see the sign, it may not change an update for you for just a moment. But if it can see it, it will update. So it's always a good idea to make sure you're also paying attention to those signs. Keep in mind that the camera is looking ahead for those speed limit signs, and there are times where it might not be able to see the sign, so you do still want to be on the lookout yourself. Coming down to other signs. Other signs will be for things like stop signs, yield, and even right-of-way signs. The default will be visual only, you can choose to have no notification of these signs or visual and audible. If multiple signs are being displayed, they will appear in a stacked formation. You'll see the stop sign peeking out behind the speed limit sign. Access your multi-information display and arrow over to the driving support screen. Then all of the available signs will be displayed across the top. There's a maximum of three total signs that can be displayed. Pushing the go back button, selecting go back again, and we'll come down to the rear seat reminder. The rear seat reminder is activated by opening a back door before your drive. To put cargo inside or even precious cargo, when you go for your drive and then turn the vehicle off, attention, check rear seat, just as a reminder that you had opened a back door before your drive. You can turn that off here by pushing the OK button to customize from on to off. If you do travel with children or pets, I recommend that you leave this feature on and just know that it's just reminding you that you may have put something in the back seat and to check that if you need to before you exit and lock your vehicle. If you have a head-up display on your new Lexus ES, you'll see additional customizations here. Go ahead and press the OK button to open this menu item. Heads up display, additional customizations. You can choose to have the tachometer section either blank with an eco indicator bar that highlights as you drive in a fuel efficient way or the tachometer. Under HUD driving support, you can choose to have navigation, driving assist, information like the lane trace assist, markers, the compass, 
and audio information all appear or not, depending on your preference. Pressing go back, you can also adjust the rotation of the heads up display. Push OK to select and then use the right or left facing arrows to tilt the heads up display clockwise or counterclockwise. Just adjust it until you have it where you like it. Push and go back, push and go back again, and arrowing down, we still have more to our list. We can turn the kick sensor off or on if you have a kick sensor on your ES to open the trunk. Arrowing down for our tire pressure warning system. This is where a technician would adjust to set the pressure or to recalibrate after changing wheels or tires. Push and go back. And scheduled maintenance and oil maintenance reminders are located here. Keep in mind that Lexus recommends that you have scheduled service every 5,000 miles or six months, whichever comes first, but you won't do an oil change every time. You'll actually do an oil change generally every 10,000 miles or once a year. Pushing the go back button, we've got that slide bar visible so we can arrow down to our last item of meter settings. Pushing OK to open, we can customize the language for the display, language for the vehicle from English, French, or Spanish. You can even do voice commands in your selected language. It's pretty awesome. Pushing go back, an additional place to customize units of measurement. Push and go back, and you can change your speedometer display, analog or digital. Arrowing down to our Drive Info 1. So remember, we have two drive information screens, and they are customizable. So it asks you to select an item you would like to change. If you don't want to change Drive Info 1, just push Go Back and then push OK to open Drive Info 2. I love having the distance or the range showing how many miles are left in my tank. A lot of people prefer to customize that secondary setting of average speed after reset. So let's highlight that to select and push OK. And then we have an opportunity to scroll through all of the available items that we can choose from. Notice that if an item is already on that information screen, it will be grayed out. That range is already at the top. You could choose to have it be blank, so it would be range only. But a lot of people really like your average fuel economy after refuel. So you know your average on the current tank of gas. That's very helpful. And another item that people like is elapsed time after start. So how long the vehicle has been turned on. And this is very helpful for long drives. If you'd like to make stops at different intervals to get up and stretch your legs, let's come back to our average fuel economy after refuel. If we push the OK button to make a selection. Now, if you'd like to take a look at the changes you've made, push the go back button go back again to exit metered settings and now we want to shortcut to our information screen from our settings menu so our settings is all the way on the right and our information is all the way on the left we don't have to click left 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 in fact all we have to do is click once to the right we loop right back around arrow down to that second drive information screen and there it is our customization for range and average fuel economy after refuel. If we want to go back to our settings quickly, we arrow to the left, push OK to reopen meter settings, and we'll come back down and arrow again to the next page of meter settings. We can choose to have a 12 hour or 24 hour clock. Just push OK to make your selection. 
And coming to the pop-up display, you can turn on or off each of these items. Turn by turn navigation, the telephone, audio operation, so indications when you're changing from one radio station to another, or volume operation when you're making an adjustment to the volume, and even the brightness indicator that we saw previously when we're adjusting the brightness of our instrument panel. So if you chose to turn that off and then you push the buttons to adjust your brightness, you'll still be able to adjust the brightness. You just won't see the brightness bar unless you have the pop-up feature turned on. Pushing go back to clear, go back to exit the pop-up display menu, and here's our eco pop-up indicator. It's not the same as selecting the eco drive mode. This is just a pop-up. The eco pop-up will just show for you when you're driving in a fuel efficient way. But if it bothers you, you can turn that off. Just push OK to select on or off. Arrowing down, push OK to open the default settings. And then you could arrow up and push OK to select Yes if you would like to restore your settings to the factory default. Push and go back, arrow down to come back to the top of the meter settings menu. Push the go back button to exit meter settings and then arrow down again and that's going to bring you to the top item in your main settings menu. Just arrow to the right and you'll shortcut back to your information display. Let's go back to our steering wheel buttons. We've taken care of all of our multi-information display buttons. This is our telephone button. The ES has one button to answer, hang up or ignore, just push. You can adjust your volume for phone and radio, minus for less, plus for more your voice command or talk button. Since Lexus vehicles equipped with the new Lexus interface multimedia system are really designed to be voice first, you can either use the talk button on the steering wheel or just use the wake phrase to activate your assistant. In fact, you have two assistants on your new Lexus ES. The Lexus assistant that operates functions on the vehicle, like giving commands for the audio system, navigation, climate control, and more. Hey Lexus. What do you want to do? Tune to classic vinyl on Sirius XM. And then you have your phone's voice assistant, either Siri or Google, for phone commands, like placing a call or sending a text. To wake your Lexus assistant, you can either say, hey, hi, hello, or okay Lexus, and then give your command, or push and release the talk button on the steering wheel. To wake your phone's assistant, simply say your phone's wake phrase, either hey Siri or okay Google, and give your command, or push and hold the talk button on the steering wheel just like you would push and hold a button on your phone to activate your phone's assistant. So you would say, hey Siri, or okay Google, for texting or placing a call. You can also use your phone's assistant for navigation. Hey Siri, get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas using Waze. On the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you have radar cruise control, just push to turn it on. You will see radar cruise active. You'll also see the cruise control icon just above your odometer. If you arrow to the driving support screen, you'll notice that it now says radar ready. You'll see the indication if cruise control and lane trace assist are both turned off. Once you have cruise control turned on, when you reach the speed that you would like to cruise, press the button that says set. Then you'll also be able to adjust your following distance. Long range, 
mid-range, and close range for the buffer zone between you and the vehicle traveling in front of yours. If you turn off cruise control or you turn the vehicle off and the system resets, the next time you're ready to use it, just press the cruise control button again to turn it back on. And notice that now it saves your last following distance setting. So typically you won't need to reset that unless it's been quite a while since you've used the system and it might reset to the default of the longest range. It will also appear in your heads up display. There are two types of cruise control on your ES. When you push and release the cruise control power button, it defaults to radar cruise. Press again to turn it off or push and hold and you'll see the feature change from radar cruise to constant speed. That means you won't be using radar or the following distance, so you will be completely in charge of braking and slowing down. Just press again to turn the feature off. Set your speed where you can increase, reduce. If you click cancel, then you can resume. When you push the lane trace assist button, it will tell you that steering assist and lane centering are active. Then you'll see the lane trace monitor system right on screen. When the lane markers show as hollow, that means the system is on, but it's not actively seeing lanes yet. When they light up solid, you'll know that the system is registering the lane markers or the shoulder or edge of a road. When the lane markers are not visible and you're traveling on the freeway, maybe you're in traffic, the system is able to trace off of the vehicle in front of you and you'll see the icon or the indicator change on the display. If you're not using radar cruise control, it's going to engage lane keep assist. So if you start to veer out of your lane and you don't have your blinker on, whichever lane you're approaching is going to light up and flash kind of like an orange color. You're going to get a vibration in your steering wheel depending on the setting that you chose in the multi-information display. You'll even get a nudge or a correction, once again, depending on your customization. If you press the Lane Trace Assist button again, you'll turn the feature off. You no longer need to push and hold to turn off Lane Trace Assist. The last few buttons on the right-hand side are for our sound system, and you can change your audio source with your Mode button. Push and release the Mode button to toggle through all audio sources, FM, AM, Sirius XM, your phone's audio content, and both streaming music subscription services. A really cool tip about the mode button is that it also operates as a mute or pause button. Just push and hold and it will mute or pause your audio content. Push and hold to resume. Only content that can be paused will be paused. Then when you start playing again, it'll pick up right where you left off. But if the content is live, it's going to mute when you push and hold the mode button. When you're listening to radio sources, your arrows will change you from one favorite to the next. Move through your radio favorites list. Just click either right or left to move up or down your list. If you're not in list view, not to worry, you'll still have the visual at the bottom for your actively playing station, and you'll also have a pop-up on your multi-information display, depending on the settings that you have in your vehicle. Your arrows will scroll you through tracks, depending on what type of audio you're listening to, and push and hold to seek. It will move to the next available signal. 
Moving up from the steering wheel, you'll notice two additional dials on either side of the gauge cluster. These are right within reach of the driver. Their position was designed by race car drivers. The whole goal was to minimize movement for the driver so you can really easily reach from the steering wheel to the dial. On the right hand side, you have your drive mode selector. You can turn the dial down for eco and you'll see the instrument cluster light up in blue. Turn up for sport and you have red. There's also a notification on the large screen as well. If you push the dial in at the end, we go to our normal mode. And so all of that lighting turns off. The drive mode selector affects throttle response. So if you dial down to eco, when you give it gas, it's going to try to help you be not quite such a lead foot. It'll help you to have the best fuel economy possible. If you twist up for sport, you're going for a more aggressive drive style. So it's going to be a little zippier, not necessarily fuel focused. When you turn the vehicle off, if you're in sport mode, when you turn it back on, it's actually going to automatically default to normal mode because of fuel economy. If you're in eco mode, when you turn the car off and back on, it's going to stay in eco mode. Same with normal. Eco or normal will stay when you turn the car off or on. Sport will default back to normal mode. The F Sport models have additional drive modes. Eco, twist down. Sport, twist up. Sport S plus, twist up again. Push on the end for normal, press again for custom. Notice that in the normal drive mode, the theme name is not displayed. You can customize your custom drive mode in settings on the main screen. To shortcut to the custom drive mode settings, just click settings. Moving to the left, we have the option of turning off our traction control. If you push the button in to turn it off, it's going to give you a message that traction control is off. Push again to turn it back on or turn the vehicle off and back on and traction control will be turned back on. The ES does come equipped with paddle shifters. You'll do this from the sequential shifting mode. From drive, just bring the shifter over to the left and you'll see the S light up. To use the paddle shifters, just squeeze to upshift on the right and downshift on the left. You can even shift on the gearbox. Just push up for upshifting and pull down for downshifting. You'll see the gear position change on screen. Obviously, we are just sitting still in drive and making these shift changes for demonstration purposes only. If you would prefer not to drive in the sequential or sport shifting mode, just move the shifter back to drive. You'll be back in the fully automatic drive mode. While we're down at our gearbox, let's address the brake hold button. Holds our foot brake. So you do have to have your seatbelt on. Just press the brake hold button to turn on the brake hold feature. You can turn this feature on from park, but you'll be using the feature when you're in drive. Shift into drive. Then when you press the brake hold button, You'll see that it's on because it's lit in green on the right hand side of the dash, but you'll also see hold in gold. When you see hold in gold, you can remove your foot from the foot brake and the ES will hold it in place for you.
it will time out and it will prompt you to reapply the brake. We're also seeing our updated parking assist system. You can press the return or go back arrow on the left hand side of the steering wheel to clear that message. However, if you are in drive and you're using the brake hold feature to remain in place, it's going to repeatedly pop up that message for you if you still are in close proximity to something that the parking sensors are trying to warn you about, just so that when you do choose to progress forward, you will be informed. Notice that we have the press brake, and if you don't automatically reapply the foot brake, it is going to engage the emergency parking brake for you. So notice on the right hand side, we now have the emergency parking brake engaged, even though technically we're still in drive. If you apply the foot brake and accelerate, then it will shift back for you into drive, releasing the emergency parking brake. Once those messages are clear, and holding gold reappears, you can remove your foot from the brake and allow the system to hold it in place for you. Your electronic parking or emergency brake lever is on the right hand side down below the start stop engine button. The parking brake on the ES is engaged automatically and the word Park appears in red on the lower right hand corner of the instrument panel. If you apply the foot brake and lift up on the parking brake lever, you'll feel the emergency parking brake release and you'll see that the word park has turned off. Lift up and hold and it will deactivate the automatic shift link function, which means if you shift into park, now the emergency brake is not going to automatically be applied. Most people prefer to have that apply automatically. When you push down on the parking brake lever, it will apply the emergency parking brake, push down and hold, and it will reactivate the shift interlock function, meaning when you put the vehicle in park, the emergency parking brake will automatically turn on. Coming down to our storage area and charging ports, you have a small storage area with a divider. The divider can be removed when you want to clean out that area, or if you would like to use the whole space, maybe for travel Kleenex, things like that. But if you do leave the divider in place, it's pretty handy if you and your passenger both want to store your phones right up front. Pull down gently on the cover to locate your USB ports. Charging and data ports have been updated with a USB-A port on the left for charging and tethered Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and a USB-C port on the right for charging only. Just pull again to close. The new cup holder layout and coming down to our new optional wireless charger. It has a larger surface area and it's turned on and ready to charge by default. When the light is green, the charging pad is ready to charge. Just place your compatible smartphone on the device and it will begin charging automatically. When it's yellow, it's charging. If the light is flashing, it could mean that there's not good contact between the back of your phone and the charging pad. Make sure to adjust the phone. It is normal with wireless chargers to see that charging is periodically turned on or off in order to protect the battery life on your cell phone. And coming to our armrest, it does still open from the driver and passenger sides. 
even though the layout configuration is a little bit different than before. And we have two USB-C charging ports and a 12 volt accessory charger. Your vehicle has the capability of linking to three garage doors or gates that are home link compatible. The button in the center with the green light is an auto dimming or anti glare feature. You can turn it off, but it will turn back on automatically with each drive cycle. Dome lights and personal lights are operated just with a touch. You can also have your lights set to door mode. When the button is pushed in and flush, then your lights will come on when you open a door. If the button is sticking out, then that means you've canceled that feature. So in order to have your dome lights come on when you open the door, just make sure to push it in so it's flush. Your controls for your moonroof are right here. If you open the moonroof, it will open the glass as well as the shade. You can also close the glass, leave the shade open, and even tuck it back a little farther. The shade is a manual close. And this button that says up and down will tilt the back of the moonroof just to bring a little fresh air into the vehicle. If you have the optional panoramic moonroof, if you push to open, it's going to open the shade and the glass at the same time. Push to close, and it will close the glass only and leave the shade open. You can operate the shade independently to close, stop, or open, and stop. It's completely up to you. SOS button is under a small cover. Push this to reach an emergency operator. All new Lexus vehicles come with a trial period for compatible Lexus connected technologies. Now let's come down to our main screen and look at our new Lexus interface system. Let's go through each item in our Lexus interface menu. Since we have our phone connected for Apple CarPlay, we see that icon at the top of our menu bar. Just click to open. There are two menu shortcuts on the bottom left corner. If you are on the Apple CarPlay home screen and you'd like to get back to Lexus interface, just click on the apps menu icon and then click Lexus, and you're right back to Lexus interface. Keep in mind, you can use your mobile assistant's wake words like, hey Siri, or you can touch and hold on the icon on the lower left-hand corner mm -hmm, and click to cancel. No matter which menu icon you see on the lower left-hand corner for Apple CarPlay, you can push and hold mm -hmm. to activate the assistant or press and hold on the voice command button on the left hand side of the steering wheel. So for your phone's mobile assistant, push and hold to activate, push and release to cancel, or just use the wake words. If you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for navigation, you can use any compatible navigation app that appears on your screen. Just scroll through. You can either select the app by clicking on the app icon, or you can give a navigation voice command with your phone's voice assistant. Hey Siri, get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Getting directions to Target. Starting route to Target. 
Notice that I just asked her for directions to a specific place, but I didn't designate a specific app to use. So Siri will default to Apple Maps. If you'd like to use a specific navigation app, just add that information to your voice command. Right now, we're in the Apple Map, but we also have Google Maps on this phone. Hey Siri, get directions to Starbucks in the Woodlands, Texas using Google Maps. Here's what I found. And now our app has changed based on the instructions that we gave. When you have a route programmed in, you'll also see navigation on the left-hand side in your multi-information display, depending on your settings. You can cancel your route on screen by selecting end route or by voice command. Hey Siri. Uh-huh. Cancel navigation. Ending navigation. And look, Ava's replied to us. Just click to play. Ava said, hey, Melissa, thank you so much. I'm enjoying this weather, are you? Have a great one. Would you like to reply? Reply, yes, it's absolutely gorgeous today. Your reply says, yes, it's absolutely gorgeous today. Send it? Yes. Done. You can either click on screen to have your message read or ask Siri to read it. Hey Siri, read my last text. You have recent messages from Ava. Ava said, hey Melissa, thank you so much. You can make a phone call in the exact same way. Hey Siri, call Sarah. Did you mean Sarah? Mobile? Yes. Calling Sarah. Mobile. If a contact has multiple types of phone numbers, you can even be more specific. You can ask for them to call that person cell work, home. The more specific you are, the more efficient it is to place your call or send a message. For more details about using Apple CarPlay in your Lexus, make sure to check out our Tech Tip Tuesday series on Apple CarPlay. Connecting to an Android phone uses the same process. Make sure to follow the prompts select to connect for Android Auto on your main screen, and then give permission to continue setup on your device. To return to the Lexus interface menu, just click the home screen button on the top left corner, and then select Lexus. You'll see the Android Auto icon on the very top of your Lexus interface menu. Just click to open. When you're using the Google Mobile Assistant, make sure to wait for the beep. Okay, Google. You can wake your Google Assistant in three different ways. Either push and hold with the voice command button on the steering wheel, and click the voice command button on the steering wheel to cancel, or push and hold the microphone button on screen, the lower left-hand corner. And click to cancel. Or just use the wake phrase and wait for the beeps. Okay, Google. How's the weather today? Today in spring, there will be thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 68 and a low of 64. Currently it's 67 degrees and cloudy. By the way, if you want to listen to the news while you drive, just say, hey Google, play the news. Okay Google. Get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Target is 7 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. Once you have your destination on screen, you can just start to drive or click on the lower left-hand corner to begin your navigation. Okay, Google, send a text to Sarah. 
Sarah, sure. What's the message? Hope you're having a great day. Sending your message saying, hope you're having a great day. Okay, Google. Call Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Calling Target. For more details about using Android Auto in your Lexus, make sure to check out our Tech Tip Tuesdays all about, all about Android Auto. To return to Lexus interface, select the Home button on the top left corner, and then click Lexus. Click on the arrow icon shortcut in your Lexus menu bar. Now let's take a look at our Lexus Drive Connect cloud-based navigation system. With Google Points of Interest, the intelligent Lexus Assistant that's always learning because it's connected to the cloud, and the Destination Assist Live Operator. If you would prefer to speak to an operator to have them help you input a destination. Those three features are bundled together when you set up your trial or paid subscription for Drive Connect, the new Lexus navigation system. The large 12.3 inch screen comes with a complimentary three year trial of Drive Connect. On the right hand side of the screen, you can click the compass to switch the orientation of the screen the flat view, two-dimensional facing the direction you're going, two-dimensional with north held at the top of the screen, and the tilted or 3D view. In the flat or 2D view, you'll see small dash marks around the compass icon. In the north up view, you'll have an N for north with a red arrow facing up. And in the 3D view, you'll have the compass pointing in the direction that the vehicle is facing with no dash marks around the compass. To zoom in, you can use the plus symbol or pull your fingers apart on screen. To zoom out, pull your fingers together or use the minus symbol. And don't forget voice command. Hey, Lexus. Zoom in on the map. Okay, zooming in. Super easy. Select the three bars to open an additional menu. You can turn on and off traffic flow information. So green, it's moving, yellow, it's slow, red, it's bumper to bumper. You can select on screen to call your destination assist operator. You can also shortcut to the navigation settings, just like clicking on settings and scrolling to navigation, and you have the same settings menu that we'll look at shortly. Coming back to our map, you can select to mute the navigation audio, the turn-by-turn -turn directions, just by clicking on the lower right-hand corner. Or unmute. In order to put in a destination, you can click on the search icon and then click search navigation to open the keyboard. And you can start typing in an address or a point of interest or look for recent searches on the right hand side. If the keyboard disappears because you're not using it, don't panic. Just touch search navigation and it will reappear. Select the numbers to begin a search for a particular street address and then letters to input the street name. You can choose go now or start to drive. You can launch a navigation command from any screen. Hey Lexus, get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas.
I found eight results near the Woodlands, Texas. The first is Target Grocery at 1100 Lake Woodlands Drive. Would you like to go to that one? Yes. Calculating route to Target Grocery. Done. Proceed to the highlighted route. Nice and simple. Hey, Lexus. What would you like to do? Cancel my trip. Canceling trip. If you'd like to use voice commands to enter an address, it always helps to say the city and state. Just don't say the zip code. Hey, Lexus, get directions to 9600 Grogan's Mill Road in the Woodlands, Texas. I found 9600 Grogan's Mill Road. Would you like to go now? Yes. Calculating route to 9600 Grogan's Mill Road. Proceed to the highlighted route. If your phone is connected via Bluetooth, you can share your location. But if you are using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and you would like to share your ETA, you need to use a navigation app from your device. You can save this location as a favorite. It's important to note that even though you can save favorites right in the system on the vehicle, in order to save your home or work location or manage your favorites list, you'll want to do that in the Lexus app. Open the app and then click Find in the menu on the lower right-hand corner of your app. Select Destinations to open the My Destinations menu. Then you can customize your address for home and work, Manage your favorites list, send locations to your Lexus, and even view recent destination searches. Now let's come back to the map. Choose the right facing arrow to review your route. Scroll to open alternative routes. Select to hide and click Go Proceed now. to the highlighted route. Once you have a highlighted route on the screen, you can click to end the trip, add a stop, add Starbucks along my route. I found 12 results along your route. The first is Starbucks at 500 Rayford Road. Would you like to go to that one? Yes. Adding Starbucks as a stop. Proceed to the highlighted route. I can then edit my stops if I have multiple stops. And let's say I wanted to go in a different order. Just grab the handlebars and drag and drop to change the order. Allow the system to update the route. Proceed to the highlighted route and click Save. Just remember to share your ETA, you do need to be connected to Bluetooth. If you'd like to do that, click Settings, Bluetooth and Devices, select your phone, and turn on the phone's connection via Bluetooth. Just remember it is going to disconnect Apple CarPlay temporarily. Coming back to our Drive Connect screen, open that drop down menu, and now we can share our ETA with our contacts from our phone. And you can end your route in multiple ways. Select End on the far right corner, open the drop down menu, and select End Trip on screen, or just use voice command. Hey, Lexus, cancel my route. Canceling trip. Nice and easy. Pop-up messages will appear on screen on the top right-hand corner, including low fuel messages and the opportunity to choose from a list of nearby gas stations.
Now let's take a look at the audio system. Select the music notes to open your audio system with our combination power, volume, and tuner dial. Just press to turn the audio system on or off. Turn the tall bezel to control volume and the lower wider bezel to tune. Your radio shortcut button will turn on and will go to whatever station or channel you were listening to previously. Make sure to note that your radio button no longer operates like a mode button, meaning if you press it repeatedly, it's not going to change you from one source to another like it used to, but it does instantly take you back to your radio screen, no matter what screen you've been on previously, including Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Just press the radio button and you shortcut right back to the new Lexus interface radio system. The reason that's so cool is because you don't have to come and open your apps and then click Lexus to come back to Lexus interface if you'd like to quickly open your radio on screen. When you press the media button, you'll see a list of your audio sources. You can select radio to be able to choose from AM, FM, or Sirius XM, your phone's music source, or the two streaming music selections that require a subscription and a Wi-Fi hotspot subscription, Apple Music or Amazon Music. And you can seek or change tracks. From your main radio screen, you'll see your favorites in the tile layout on the right. The station that's actively playing will show in the large bar across the bottom. Clicking Sources, you'll see a list of your audio sources. When you turn on the radio in a Lexus interface vehicle, if you have already had a driver profile connected to another Lexus interface vehicle and you've saved radio favorites, guess what? They go with your driver profile. So check this out. I have radio favorites already in this vehicle and I haven't even set it up yet because it was attached to my driver profile. I think that is so cool. But don't worry, I'm still going to show you how it works. You'll see that we're in the radio menu. We have our favorites with tiles showing on the right hand side. We can have 20 favorites. To tune to a station, you can select Tune, choose FM, AM, or Sirius XM, and then Type in your channel number or your station. When you see your channel or station, click Tune to Station. And then it's going to pull up your content. To favorite that station, just click the heart. If you have favorited something by mistake, you can select Undo or deselect the heart whatever you prefer. When you have a station playing in full screen mode, you'll see your favorites in list view on the left hand side. You can choose edit and then you can delete by clicking on the minus symbol. When you're finished, you click done editing. If you'd like to change the order that your favorites are shown on screen, just grab the handlebars. There's three little bars, touch and hold, and then you can drag and drop for any order that you prefer. Also from this screen, you can change stations or channels just by clicking plus to move up, minus to move down, and you'll notice that you're just going click by click from one available signal to the next. You can also scan to find stations and then press scan again to turn the feature off. Coming back to radio, from this screen where your favorites are in tile view, 
you can just simply click to open and play that station. Coming back to radio, you can tune by choosing your source, FM, then select your genre, or look at recently played stations, or scroll through all of the available stations that are in your area. AM operates in the same way. Select AM radio, choose your genre, look at recents, or select from all available stations. Sirius XM is also similar, but it has some additional features. When you see the genres, they're more broad. Pick a genre that you want, and then you can get more specific if you have a certain type of music that you're interested in. Then you can choose the channel that you like in that genre. Or select to go back and choose a different topic like sports, news, talk, or see all available channels based on your subscription. You can also review your SiriusXM listening history. Selecting to go back. Another really cool feature for satellite radio is related content and notify me. Related content is going to pull up other channels that you might like based on the channel that you're already listening to. You can select what's been suggested and then favorite that if you'd like. You can also select notify me to receive a notification if that artist or that song is playing on another channel. Selecting go back to come to our favorites tile menu view. And you can use the tuner dial to tune AM, FM, or Sirius XM content. But my favorite way to tune to a radio station, of course, is by voice command. Hey, Lexus, I want to listen to 99.1 FM. Tuning to 99.1 FM. Hey, Lexus. What do you want to do? Tune to classic vinyl on Sirius XM. And boom, you can also locate your Sirius XM radio ID right through the audio system screen. Select Tune, Sirius XM, and click zero on the number pad to see your radio ID. You cannot use the tuner dial to come to channel zero. Notice it just skips over and it goes from the lowest available program channel, which is channel one. You can dial up, but when you dial to the left, it will jump you to the highest channel number. The same is true if you're using the channel plus or minus. If you select minus, you can't access channel zero. Just come back to tune. Sirius XM, zero, and then you'll see your radio ID. Notice that when I select my phone's media source, it will default to Apple CarPlay as the source because of the type of phone we're using, but you'll still see the operation through the Lexus interface audio system. If I want to see the phone's operation through the phone system, just click on that icon at the top left corner to open Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and then make your audio selection on screen from the audio apps you've installed on your device. There are a variety of audio controls right on screen. You can shuffle, repeat, forward and back arrows on screen, the hard button arrows for seek and track, and the hard button arrows on the lower right hand side of the steering wheel. For the most part, they operate in the same way. Typically, you will either push and release or push and hold to advance forward or back or change tracks. 
Coming to the phone with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, we see the phone favorite, our recent calls, our full contact list. We also have a keypad. We have the ability to have our vehicle play voicemail. Selecting the app icon in the lower left corner to go back and click on Lexus to return to our Lexus interface system. The telephone operation will be different if you're connected for Bluetooth. Here's how to do that. Come to Settings. Come to Bluetooth and Devices. Choose your phone. And then toggle to enable phone and click Continue to confirm. You can also select to use Bluetooth for media. You'll notice that the Apple CarPlay shortcut has been hidden from the Lexus interface menu on the left-hand side. Now, when we click on the phone menu icon, we see what the phone looks like when it's connected through Bluetooth. You still have the same functionality. When you turn the vehicle off and back on, it will not only remember your last selection for permission to use either Bluetooth or to connect for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it will also search for new favorites, contacts, and it will update your recent call history. Favorites, contacts, and recents are all managed through your phone. You have a keypad selection available. And of course, make a phone call by voice command. Hey, Lexus. What do you want to do? Call Sarah. Calling Sarah. You can even dial by number by voice. Hey, Lexus. Dial 281-569-3300. Calling Northside Lexus at work. You can even set up text messaging permission just by following the instructions to customize the settings in your phone. Open Settings and Bluetooth, and then look for the Bluetooth connection for your vehicle, Lexus ES. Select the lowercase i for information and then turn on Show Notifications. Once you've given permission on your phone for notifications, click Yes. No messages currently synced. That's because you haven't received a text message during this drive cycle. You'll receive a drop-down notification. Then you can ask your assistant, Hey, Lexus. How can I help you? Read my last text message. Message from Melissa O'Connell, thank you. Would you like to reply? Yes. Please dictate your message. You bet, period. Have a great day. Your message says, you bet. Have a great day. Would you like to send? You'll also see a notification number next to your messages. Just select to play. Hello. Then you can click send message. What do you want your message to say? Have a great day. Your message says, have a great day. Would you like to send this? Yes. So you can give the verbal confirmation to send or click send on screen. Just keep in mind that texting via Bluetooth is a little more restrictive than using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for text messaging. Let's come to our vehicle icon. We have climate right at the top. Many of the climate controls are operated from your hard button shortcuts that are just below the main air conditioning vents. You can adjust the driver's temperature up or down, the passenger's temperature up or down. Once the passenger's temperature is operated, you'll notice that it does not change the driver's temperature and it deactivates what we call sync mode. If you're coming out of a previous Lexus model, you may be used to having a dual button. Sync is the opposite of dual. When sync is on, the temperatures will match. 
they sync up to match the driver's selected temperature. So you have one consistent temperature throughout the entire vehicle. There's not a hard button shortcut for dual or sync. In fact, on this new system, we don't use the term dual at all. We just use sync and you can sync the temperature either from this climate screen or by voice. Hey Lexus, sync the temperatures. Turning on sync mode. Now you can either use the hard button to adjust airflow mode or select on screen. When you take over airflow mode or fan speed, it will turn off the auto operation for fan and airflow. If you turn the auto operation of your fan speed back on, it's not possible to turn that off by pressing the button again. You just need to take over, either adjust your fan speed and auto will be deselected. And if you adjust your airflow mode, you'll also see auto turn off on screen under the airflow mode icon. Just keep toggling through until you have it where you want it. You can also click right on screen. When you're using the hard button shortcuts for climate control and you operate the fan speed, either turning it up, down, or off, you'll have a pop-up at the top right-hand corner of your display. You'll also see the airflow mode icon change as you press and release the button, toggling you through all of the different airflow mode options. You can also turn on Climate Concierge if your Lexus ES is equipped with this feature. Climate Concierge takes every climate feature and puts it in auto. Auto for fan speed based on your temperature and the outside temperature, and auto mode is turned on for the seat and steering wheel climate. If you'd like to turn off Climate Concierge, it kind of works just like the auto feature does, you're not able to turn it off by clicking on the same button. Now, if you've had Lexus before, you're probably already used to this. You're telling the vehicle to just operate all of your climate for you based on the temperature you select. If you want to operate the system yourself, just start operating the fan and climate concierge will turn off or airflow mode and climate concierge will turn off. However, the auto mode for seat climate and steering wheel climate will remain on until you take over. Keep in mind to turn on climate concierge just takes one click, but to turn it off, you have multiple steps. So just keep that in mind. It would be great if we could just push Climate Concierge one more time and have it all turned off, but unfortunately, that's not the way it is. Another detail to be aware of is that you can't adjust the fan speed on the main screen. You adjust that with the fan buttons, more fan, less fan, everything off, or adjust by voice command. Hey Lexus, increase the fan speed. Setting the fan speed to two. Front defrost, rear window and side mirror defrost. Notice that these two items are not reflected on our climate control screen. You'll see the light indicator letting you know if they are on or off. We also have operation for where our air is coming from. We have outside air, recirculating air, or an auto mode that will choose based on the speed that the vehicle is traveling, and the smog sensor on the vehicle. Coming to options, you can turn on and off the eco heat and cool feature, 
and you can turn on and off the windshield wiper de-icer. If your ES is equipped with S-Flow, you'll see this icon on screen. When the S-Flow system is turned on your smart flow system, air will flow to occupied seats. So right now, I'm the only one in the vehicle. I'm in the driver's seat. I've selected my driver's temperature, but notice that there's not even a temperature selection readout on the front passenger side. That's because there are no additional passengers in the vehicle. So if you hop in your Lexus ES and you don't see a temperature readout there, don't panic. It just means that the system is not detecting a passenger and your S flow is active. You'll see the symbol air flowing to the front passenger and not the back. So the X canceling airflow to the back and the front passenger if a front passenger is not detected. However, if a front passenger is detected or we operate the front passenger temperature, then air will flow to the front two seats. You can deselect to cancel S flow, and then you will have air flowing throughout the entire cabin. Selecting vehicle to come back to our previous screen and comfort. We have hard button shortcut operation for our seat and steering wheel climate and come down to the additional climate control buttons located here. The first press is going to activate auto mode. Auto is going to use the selected interior temperature and the outdoor temperature in order to determine whether or not the system thinks that you need to have the heated seats or the fan for the seats should be turned on and at what level. If you would like to take over control, just press the button. You have three levels of fan and three levels of heat. Just press until you have the setting you prefer. When you press the button to turn on the heated steering wheel, the first press also engages auto mode. Press again to take over. Two levels of heat or auto or off. But you can also operate it right on screen. If you touch the seat image, it's not clickable, but you can touch either fan or heat. And just like with the hard buttons, the first activation will turn on the auto mode. If you want to take over, just select the item that you want and keep clicking until you have the setting where you like it. Auto is the first touch, the highest level is the second touch, and then it will come down from there. Pushing the button to operate the rear sunshade, press once to raise the sunshade, and once again to lower. When the rear sunshade is in place and you shift into reverse, the sunshade will retract down. When you shift into drive, it will remain down. But when you put the ES into park, it will come right back up. Selecting vehicle to come back and opening trip information. You'll see current trip information. You can also clear the data or choose history. And from the history screen, you can clear data or select to update. Hybrid models will also have an energy flow monitor here. Push and go back and vehicle alerts if you have them. On some screens, the trip information screen, and if you have a hybrid, it will stay on the hybrid energy flow screen. So just keep in mind that when you click on the vehicle icon, if you default back to previous full screen page, then 
look at the top on the left, you have vehicle in blue with a left facing arrow. Click that because it means you have more items in the menu that you can view. When you don't see a go back arrow on the top left, that means you're at the beginning of that menu item. So that's everything in our vehicle settings screen. Let's go through our settings menu items. If you would like to add an additional driver profile, you would click on the plus a person icon and then you'll be asked for their Lexus account login information. You can sign out to guest mode. And the primary driver can choose edit and then can delete or remove additional drivers or delete your own primary driver profile if you are resetting the system on the vehicle. Selecting personal info and you can see the devices that are linked to your driver profile. You can also choose to reset and clear the system. Coming to Bluetooth and devices, you can add another device or switch between devices if you have more than one device connected to the vehicle. If you select a device, you can toggle between the Apple CarPlay connection and a Bluetooth connection. When you choose to have Bluetooth connected, Apple CarPlay will turn off. It's either one connection type or the other. So when Bluetooth is on, Apple CarPlay is off, and you'll notice the Apple CarPlay icon has been hidden from our Lexus interface menu. So you don't see that anymore. But if we want to come back to Apple CarPlay, just choose Use for Apple CarPlay. And if you're prompted to connect, you'll just click Connect. Otherwise, it'll do it for you automatically, and your CarPlay shortcut is back at the top of the Lexus menu pushing settings to go back. Also make sure that you're aware if you get a new phone and you'd like to forget or eliminate the old phone from the system, just click on the phone's name and then choose forget on the bottom right hand corner. It's also always a good practice to delete the phone from the car and the car from the phone in your smartphone settings. Selecting Go Back to Settings and coming down to General. Under Accessibility, we can turn on or off the screen beep. If you turn off the screen beep, it will be silent when you operate it. You can adjust the screen sensitivity with the plus or minus. In the winter, if you're driving with gloves on, you're going to want to increase the screen sensitivity. Bring it up to the highest level. Then you won't have any problems operating your system on screen. You can make changes to your date and time settings. There are two clocks, the analog clock near your main display and the digital clock on your instrument cluster. If you don't have an active cloud connected drive connect navigation subscription, you'll control your clock settings under the time menu on the right hand side. Select your time zone and then turn on or off daylight saving time depending on the time of year. We fall back in the fall and spring forward in the spring. You'll see the clocks change right away. Once you've made your selections for time zone and daylight savings, make sure to select set automatically so the vehicle will automatically adjust based on the settings you've selected. When you turn off set date and time automatically, you'll be able to set the time manually. Make your adjustments for hours and minutes or reset 
to the top of the hour. Press OK to confirm. Most people prefer to set the time automatically based on their time zone and daylight savings selections. If you have a Drive Connect subscription on your Lexus ES, you'll be able to set the date and time by GPS. And then everything will happen automatically. Notice that if you don't set the date and time by GPS, if you have the Drive Connect navigation subscription, you'll also have a setting for auto adjust for time zone and daylight saving time. You can also customize the date layout, so the format of how the date appears for things like notifications, software update history, things like that. It's not going to actually show the date on your screen. If you'd like to see date information, you're going to use the calendar app through your phone's system either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Selecting the keyboard and you can clear your keyboard search history. This is another spot to change the language for the vehicle from English, Spanish, or French. You can choose to have the measurements for the vehicle selected automatically, or you can choose from the list, pushing settings to go back, Opening notifications, you'll definitely want to make sure that the software updates notification is available because this vehicle is compatible with over-the-air updates and you'll get a pop-up on screen letting you know if you have an update available. Selecting vehicle suggestions and you can have those pop-up show when the car is on or when the car is on but stopped or you can choose to turn that off. You can choose to have navigation during phone calls set for on or off to receive turn-by-turn -turn notifications while you're on the phone. You can also customize which navigation alerts you hear, turn-by-turn -turn instructions, traffic alerts, state border guidance, guidance on unverified roads, and high occupancy vehicle lanes. Selecting Wi-Fi and you'll see two items here. The hotspot, which allows you to subscribe through AT&T to have your vehicle operate as a hotspot for passengers' devices. So if you have somebody in the vehicle who has maybe an iPad or a tablet that does not have its own data plan, they can choose to hotspot off of your phone, or if you are subscribing through AT&T, they can hotspot off of your Lexus. Turning the feature off, and when you open Wi-Fi, this allows your vehicle to connect to Wi-Fi networks. You'll use this for certain over-the-air updates. Not all over-the-air updates require a Wi-Fi connection, but some will. Just follow the prompts on screen. Coming to display, we can turn the display off and see how dirty it is. Yikes! Just touch twice to turn the display back on. By default, the screen will change from day to night mode based on the time of day and ambient lighting. Or you can choose to customize that feature for day mode only or night mode only. Totally up to you. A lot of people do prefer for it to change automatically to reduce glare at night. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast. Select camera in order to adjust the brightness or the contrast for your rear backup camera view. Clicking on settings and coming down to sound and media. Turn on or off the auto sound levelizer. When you have a phone connected for Bluetooth, you'll be able to make adjustments to the ringtone, 
message notifications, if you're receiving a text, and the received volumes. And you can adjust the system voice, so how loud or soft is your Lexus Assistant, and volume for driving assist. If your audio system is currently turned off and you try to turn on surround sound, you'll see that it turns on, but then it goes back off automatically. Just turn on your audio system and surround sound is available if you prefer surround sound. Otherwise, you can turn that feature off. Coming to sound and tuning to adjust the treble, mid-range, and bass for your audio source. And you can also adjust the fade for the sound placement in the vehicle. You can choose to move it forward or back, push it to the right or to the left. Depending on what you're listening to, you may prefer the sound focused in a particular area in the vehicle. Just know that when you adjust that speaker placement, that it is for all audio sources. If you'd like to recenter the balance and fade, just click recenter. Coming to media, and you can choose to have your streaming default source for either Apple Music or Amazon Music. Keep in mind that streaming music services do require that you have a subscription to those third party music sources and a Wi Fi hotspot subscription. It does require that Wi Fi hotspot connection in order to stream content. You can always use your Apple or Amazon Music apps through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You can also choose to have cover art display or not. Completely up to you. Scrolling down and opening radio, we are able to choose to have FM information on or off and HD radio signal brought in for FM or AM HD radio station programming. Scrolling down and you'll have GraceNote database information allowing that to be connected or not. Hybrid radio was a way to use cellular data connection to make up for a poor radio signal, but the feature has been discontinued and an over-the-air update will remove this setting from your system. Selecting Sirius XM you can see your account status, confirming that it's active. You can allow notifications or not. You can also block explicit content if you prefer. I recommend leaving on this feature called Tune Start. This is really cool. This allows songs and programming to start at the beginning of that song. It's really a neat feature that satellite radio offers. Coming to sports, and we can customize details for our favorite teams. We can click on edit and then look for your home team, click OK, and then you can track alerts for that particular team. Go Astros. Coming to music, and you can choose to be notified when certain artists or songs are playing on other stations that will allow you to switch to that programming. Coming to help and support and you have the contact number for SiriusXM customer care. You also have your radio ID. They are going to need that if you reach out to customer care. You can also locate your SiriusXM radio ID right through the audio system screen. Select Tune, Sirius XM, and click zero on the number pad to see your radio ID. And it will let you know what version is operating on the vehicle. Clicking on sound and media, and we've reviewed all of the items in that menu. Clicking on settings, and coming to navigation. In navigation, you can choose to turn on or off speed limit information, traffic incidents, and free flowing traffic information. You can also select to turn on or off showing your home, work, or favorites, and even nearby parking on your navigation screen. Now keep in mind that right now, 
home and work need to be set up and customized inside your Lexus app settings. You can even recalibrate your map if you need to do so. Coming to route options, if you would like to avoid toll roads, highways, ferries, seasonal roads, or border crossings, just select to toggle that item to on. Keep in mind that when you turn it on, it is going to avoid that specific selection. We have a lot of toll roads in our area, so we usually use toll roads, so we don't want to avoid them. We want to allow toll roads. Selecting settings to go back and vehicle customize. Make sure to note that the items on this screen will vary. If you have an F Sport model ES, you'll see the custom drive mode selections here. Opening our lighting settings and you can adjust the sensitivity for the auto setting on your headlights, your automatic headlights. This customizes your automatic headlights to turn on sooner or later, depending on your selection. Do you want it to come on while it's still brighter out? Or would you like to delay and have them come on when the sensor notices that it is darker outside? Start with the normal setting and then make adjustments from there if you prefer. There's an auto off timer for the headlights. When you exit and lock the vehicle, you can either press the lock button on your key fob two times and it will turn off your headlights or you can allow them to turn off automatically either 30, 60, or 90 seconds after you've locked the car from the smart access system or you press the lock button one time on your key fob. You can also choose to have that turned off. Daytime running lights can be deactivated. Most people prefer to keep daytime running lights active. Your exterior lighting, the puddle lights, welcome lights, also can be customized to automatically turn off seven and a half seconds, 15, which is the default, or extend it up to 30 seconds. Same for the interior lighting, your dome lights. How long do you want those to stay on until they automatically turn off or you open the driver's door to exit the vehicle? Seven and a half, 15, or 30 seconds. For door control, the automatic lock feature. When do you want the doors to automatically lock before your drive? by speed, so you would start to drive and at a few miles an hour, all the doors will lock automatically, or by shift from park, so you shift into gear and the vehicle will lock, or you can turn the feature off if you prefer. The auto unlock feature is something that I always like to customize. I prefer to turn this off, which means when I have gone on a drive, I come to a stop and shift into park, the vehicle stays locked until I unlock it. You could choose to have the vehicle unlock when you unlock from the driver's door or the entire vehicle will unlock when you shift into park. Completely up to you. This is just my personal preference. Push OK to clear. You can adjust some settings for the electronic key fob. You can have the two press to unlock turned on, which means when you push the unlock button two times, it unlocks the entire vehicle. So one press would unlock the driver's door and two presses would unlock the entire ES. You can also choose to lock the vehicle when a door is opened. That means that you could have one door open while you're organizing some things, but still have the remainder of the vehicle locked. You can choose which doors open when you unlock with the smart access system from the driver's door, either the driver's door only or all doors. Additional key setting adjustments. There is an auto relock timer but don't confuse this with an automatic locking feature. The vehicle does not automatically lock. 
What this means is if you were to have unlocked the vehicle, but you didn't open a door, after 30, 60, or 120 seconds, it will re-lock. So this means you've never opened a door. You can also turn that feature off. If you do open a door and you go for a drive, when you exit that vehicle, you'll need to lock it, either from the key fob, the smart access system, or the remote feature on your Lexus app. You can turn on or off the feedback light, and you can increase or decrease the tone that it makes. Coming to boarding and exit, if you're like me and not very tall, you may want to change the seat slide to partial, and then it just makes it a little easier to reach the pedals when you're ready to start the vehicle. You can also turn seat slide off if that's your preference, but if you are tall or you would like plenty of room when you exit the vehicle, keep your selection at full. Pushing OK and coming to the steering column. You can choose tilt, which is on by default, or telescopic, it'll move toward you or away. My favorite is tilt and telescopic. That means it's going to tilt the steering wheel up and tuck away, giving you more room to enter or exit the vehicle. If you have an F Sport model ES, you'll see the custom drive mode selections here. You'll select custom drive mode, and then you can choose power, normal, or eco for your powertrain, sport or normal for the chassis feel, and eco or normal for the climate control or air conditioning system. Just click OK to save. Coming to climate, you can make adjustments to the automatic seat temperature. So when you press the heat or fan buttons to turn on the auto mode, you can increase or decrease by two levels for the driver and front passenger. You can also lengthen or shorten the amount of time that the steering wheel heating stays on. You can choose to have the AC compressor turn on with the auto feature, and you can also adjust the sensitivity of the smog sensor, increasing or decreasing sensitivity. Coming to voice and search, if the wake word is turned off, you won't be able to say, hey Lexus, or hey Siri, and then state your command. But you can still use the voice command button on the steering wheel and launch voice commands on screen. Just remember that push and release is like saying, hey Lexus, and push and hold will activate your phone's voice assistant, either Siri or Google depending on your device. You can also choose to have voice prompts turned off. It doesn't mean that your assistant isn't going to talk to you at all. It just means that when you launch voice commands, you'll only be prompted with a beep rather than a beep and then a phrase to ask what you would like to do. And without voice prompts, hey Lexus, turn on the radio. with voice prompts turned on and waiting for her question. Hey Lexus. What can I do for you? Turn on the radio. Turning on the radio. Even with voice prompts turned on, you can say your wake phrase and your voice command all in a row. Hey Lexus, turn on the radio. Turning on the radio. Selecting dealer info, you can customize and edit the information for your servicing dealer. Under info and security, you'll see the vehicle name, and you could turn on the privacy lock. 
or do a full system reset if required. Selecting software updates, and that will tell you if there are updates available. You can also review the model information. And selecting apps. This will allow the system to reinstall apps if necessary. You usually will not need to go here unless you are prompted to do so. Coming to Remote Connect. Your remote will typically authorize during your normal setup process, but if for some reason it doesn't, you can come here and then push through the final authorization so that you can use your remote feature through your Lexus app. And we've totally finished our settings menu. The layout for the 8 inch screen is very similar to the layout for the 12.3 inch screen. There will be a few differences just to accommodate the size, but the functionality remains the same. You can subscribe to the Drive Connect Navigation Bundle if you would like. The display from your parking sensors will appear in the top right hand corner of your backup camera view. The backup camera on the 8 inch display does have a slightly different layout because the settings have been moved to the bottom corners of the screen rather than the menu bar on the left hand side but you still have the same settings. You can change from a wide angle view to a more straight back view. You can customize your backup camera lines with all of the same options that we saw previously. In the rear seats, you have air conditioning vents. You can dial them closed or open and adjust where the air is flowing. Coming below the air conditioning vents, you have a 12 volt accessory charger and two USB-C chargers. The ES is equipped with latch safety system for car seats. So you'll see those attachments on both outboard seats. So the two main seats have two attachment points. The center seat does not have those lower attachments. All three back seats do have top tethers for car seats. So you can put three car seats or boosters into the back seat of the ES. You just want to make sure that you are properly following the instructions that come with your particular car seat. If your ES is equipped with rear window shades, you'll see the tab for the main window shade right at the bottom. Just gently pull up and lift into place. Push away and up to release the shade from the hooks. The small section has its own shade. Just pull out and hook into place at the back. When you want to retract the small shade section, just pull away gently from the hook and then slowly let it retract back into its storage spot. In the back seat of the ES, if you pull down on the loop that opens the center armrest, you have cup holders and you have access to a pass-through. The pass-through is for longer cargo that might fit through into the trunk. What you want to make sure of is that if you are valet parking your vehicle, if you have items that are in your trunk to keep them more secure, you want to lock that pass-through. Let me show you how to do that. Inside your smart key is a metal emergency key. See that? All you have to do is push on the dot where it says push and then release that metal key. This key will lock your pass through and your glove compartment. The mechanical key is also your emergency key unlock from the key cylinder behind the driver's door handle. When you open the back of the door handle, you'll locate the key cylinder here. 
Turn right to unlock and left to lock. To lock your pass-through, make sure you have your metal key. You're going to really want to hold on to it. You don't want it to fall and get lost in the seating. So hang on to it. Slide that in, then just twist to the right, remove the key, and now your pass-through is locked. And just do the opposite to unlock. Key goes in, twist to the left, remove the key, and now we're open again. So once you lock your pass-through, let me show you the step you need to take in your glove compartment. Looking at our glove compartment, we have the button to release. Then take a look inside. You have a trunk cancel button. This cancels the functionality of the power trunk. If you push that and it's sticking out pretty far as far as it can, that means the power operation on your trunk will no longer operate. Whether you have pushed the button inside the vehicle, at the back of the trunk, on the key fob, kick sensor, you name it. If it's power operating, it's not going to function. So if you want to restore the functionality, push that button in, then your power trunk's going to work again. But if you want to do a valet lockout, you can cancel your trunk mode, your power trunk mode, close your glove compartment, use your metal key. You might want to use a little flashlight if you're having trouble, but just slide it in. You should not have to push hard. You just have to find the correct way to line it up. Twist down flat, and now it's locked. Slide that key out. This is locked. And if you have now locked your glove box and your pass-through, you take this with you when you valet park your car and give them the key fob without the metal key. So they can lock the car, unlock the car, and start the car, but they can no longer power open that trunk. On the lower outside portion of the passenger side rear seat, you'll see an air intake vent. It's important to keep this area clear so that air can flow in and across the hybrid battery to keep it cool. With hybrid vehicles, access your multi-information display, arrow to the information menu, and scroll down to see the energy monitor screen. This is a smaller summary screen right in your multi-information display. There's an additional summary screen on your large center display. When the gasoline engine turns on, either to support the climate control system or the speed that you would like to travel, you'll see that reflected on your energy monitor screen on the multi-information display and the main screen in vehicle settings on the main screen. Just click to open. The energy monitor is going to be like a summary screen of energy consumption or energy storage as you drive. Keep in mind that it's not precise and that this is just a simple representation of the hybrid battery. It's not showing exact voltage, energy storage capacity, or the charge level of the battery. When the gasoline engine turns off, the EV icon pops up on the lower right side of your instrument cluster. This does not mean you're driving in the selected EV mode. This just means that currently you're operating on all electric power. When the gasoline engine is running, you'll no longer see the EV pop-up icon on the right-hand side of your instrument cluster. If your ES is a hybrid, you'll have the addition of the EV mode button. When you push the button to activate EV mode, you'll see the EV mode icon light up on the lower right-hand side of your instrument panel. Press again and it will turn off. Activating EV mode will require driving at very low speeds. It's predominantly about limiting emissions 
and it will allow the vehicle to operate in all electric mode for a short period of time. When you press the EV button, you'll have a message letting you know EV mode unavailable, hybrid battery low, if you need to have a stronger charge for the hybrid battery in order to use EV mode. If you see that message, don't worry. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the vehicle. It's a precautionary measure that's in place to protect and extend your hybrid battery life. Just allow the system to continue to operate in full hybrid mode, accessing all electric power as it can, and then turning on the gas engine as necessary in order to give the power that you're asking for or to help support the charge of the hybrid battery. Thank you so much for stopping by the Lexus Virtual Classroom today to learn all about the new Lexus ES. If you have questions about your Lexus, don't forget to leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe so you can be notified about any tech tips or additional video tutorials that we have here at the Lexus Virtual Classroom. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Just kick right in the center of the rear bumper, straight forward. Make sure you have your key.